Hello, in this video we're going to talk about the normal distribution as shown in the syllabus. I'll show you how to make normal probability calculations. With a discrete random variable, all of the outcomes and their respective probabilities can be shown in a table. However, this is not possible with a continuous random variable. Since a continuous random variable can take on any value within a given range, there would be an infinite number of values that that variable can have. So instead, a continuous probability distribution is often represented graphically as shown in the diagram here. Since the sum of all the probabilities is equal to one, and each probability is the height of an infinitely thin bar, that's shown there, or there's another one shown there, then the sum of all these heights must be equal to one. This means that the total area underneath the continuous probability distribution of the curve must be equal to 1, or 100%. So for a continuous probability distribution, probabilities are given by an area under a specific region of the curve. For example, the probability that x lies between a and b, shown by this shaded area here. And since x is a continuous random variable, there is no difference between these two statements. We think about what the first value less than 2 is, well that will be 1.999999 infinitely. The most widely occurring <coughs> continuous distribution is called the normal distribution. This is a symmetrical distribution with the most likely outcomes around the central value, here, and increasingly unlikely outcomes further away from the centre, for example, over here. The shape of the normal distribution curve is called bell-shaped. And three examples of variables that may be normally distributed are given below. The central value of a normal distribution is the mean value and is denoted by the Greek letter mu. The distribution is symmetrical, as I said, so the mean value is also the median value is also the modal value, or same value in the middle. And again, because the distribution is symmetrical, the probability of x having a value less than the mean value will be equal to 0.5, that's this area here, and the probability of x having a value bigger than or equal to the mean value is also equal to 0.5, that's all these probabilities in this area here. And finally, the x-axis is an asymptote, so the distribution gets closer and closer towards it, but never actually touches it. To specify a particular normal distribution, we need to know its central value, its mean value, and how spread out the distribution is. In other words, what its standard deviation is. When we write x follows a normal distribution with mean and variance. Notice the variance is the number written in the brackets. We say x is normally distributed with a mean of mu and a variance of sigma squared. And mu and sigma, the mean and the standard deviation, are called the parameters of this distribution. So there are certain properties of a normal distribution that you need to know. It is always the case that approximately 68% of the data will lie within plus one standard deviation and minus one standard deviation of the mean value. 
So there's a 68% chance of X lying in this interval. And there is a 95% chance that X will lie within the interval plus two standard deviations and minus two standard devi deviations from the mean value. And finally, there is a 99.7% chance that X will lie within plus three standard deviations and minus three standard deviations of the mean value. So what that means is if we add or subtract three standard deviations from the mean value, it will take you virtually to the top of the curve and to the bottom of the curve. This is helpful when you have to put your scale on your, on your diagram. As with the binomial distribution, in the normal distribution, you're also expected to calculate probabilities directly from your calculator. So in this example, we're told that X follows a normal distribution with parameters 10 and 25. And we're asked to find the probability that X lies between four and seven. So the mean value is 10, the variance, this is the variance here, is 25. And we find the standard deviation by square root in the variance so the standard deviation is 5. So to calculate the given probability, we need to input the distribution into your calculator. So I'll just show you how to do that. From the menu, if you choose option 2 for statistics, you press F5 for a distribution, and then F1 for a normal distribution, and then press F2 for a normal cumulative probability calculation. And make sure the data is set to variable. If we then scroll down, we can enter the lower limit of the calculation, which is <coughs> X has to be bigger than four. We can set the upper limit of the calculation, X has to be less than seven. Let's enter. We can enter the standard deviation. Notice we have to enter the standard deviation, not the variance. Standard deviation is five. And <clears throat> enter the mean, and the mean was 10. Enter 10. And then if we press execute, we will see the required probability. So the probability that x lies between 4 and 7 is equal to 0 